It was early in the morning when the students in Ward 5 began searching for one of their ward member. The search became intensive as he was nowhere to be found inside the school. The security men were then sent to search for him outside the school and the rest of us who was engaged in the search for him retired and began our preparation for class. While we were learning, a call came in and all the students were called to the assembly hall for an announcement. According to the principal, he said Buju, the missing boy in Ward 5, was found dead in the nearby forest. He said the fact was proven by the piece of his body found and that he was devoured by a wild animal. The principal made an instruction that no one should be seen outside their ward or hostel by 12 midnight on ward. On this very day, I went for a night class to study since test was nearby. It was 10 p.m., and the night class prefect asked us all to go and ease ourselves and also let the people who are returning to Thier Hostel leave. I was a newbie and had no friends, so I went outside to a lonely place to ease myself while others were going to a be different spot to ease themselves in groups. While I was peeing, I saw something passed swiftly through the reflection of the light. I thought it less, not until I saw it taking a student along with it. This time around, it was walking slowly, and when it passed through the light, I could visualize it very well. It was a gorilla with two horns and a tail. I began following it bit by bit, but while we were close to the outrance of the school, the security guard caught me and asked me to retreat. Throughout the night, I couldn't focus on what I was reading because I was busy pondering on the incident I experienced earlier. The next day, a complaint was made by a student who dwells in the ward I was staying, stating that his bedmate never came back from night class the previous night. A search was done and announcements was made that he was found dead in the forest. While I was walking back to the class, I saw this new teacher who got employed a week after my registration into the boarding school. She was caressing a student in JSS 3, but immediately she caught sight of me. She pretended as if nothing happened. Every break time, I'll notice she was always seen with this JSS3 student. I began suspecting her because whenever she sees me and she is with the student, she acts cold. It was a Friday, four days after the previous missing and death of a student. By 9 p.m., I was going to fetch some water outside our ward to bath due to a broken pipe. On my way back from fetching the water, I saw the monster walking towards the hostel occupied by junior students. I quietly followed it down to the hostel where the monster picked up a student and walked straight to the bush path, but I couldn't get into the bush because of fear of my life. But I didn't retreat. Rather, I stood by the bush beside the school fence watching the monster. Thirty minutes later, I saw the new teacher walking out of the direction where the monster was, and as soon as our eyes met, she ran back into the forest. The next morning a report came through stating that the same boy who I always found with the new teacher was dead, and his body was found in the nearby forest. I finalized that the new teacher was the cause of the whole mystery, and I plan to expose her as soon as I have proof. My plan was to sneak into the principal's office and get my phone to video her in the act as proof. By 6 p.m., while the principal was out of school, I made my way to the principal's office, but immediately I got there. I saw her coming out of the principal's office. She walked directly to me and held my hand, dragging me to a private location. What is your problem? Do you want to get killed? She asked me. In reply, I said almost immediately, Are you going to kill me? Don't you know I know your secret? She smirked at me and opened a booklet for me. See all these names. These are the names of the people the monster is planning to kill this semester, and I am only trying to save them she said with a serious outlook on her face. I scrolled down the list on the booklet and found my name among the next ten people to be executed. I became scared and began panicking. Where did you get this list from? I asked with a shaky voice. It's from the principal's office, of course. I wanted to show you so you will help me stop him or the monster. She stared at me waiting for my reply. I immediately nodded in agreement with her, so she told me to buckle up because she was taking me to the den of the monster. I quickly rushed back to my room and prepared my kit to go to the den. When I was done, I quickly rushed to the spot she instructed me to wait, and together we both went to the place. 
The den was under a tree and inside was dark, but eventually we found a light bulb and switched it on. When we began examining the place, we found a couple of artworks on the walls, strange drawings I know nothing about. I started taking pictures with the phone the new teacher gave to me. While we were in doing the search, we heard the door crack open. The teacher immediately pushed me into an open box and closed it while she was held captive by the person who entered. When the person tied her up and carried her out, I came down and began to follow the person bit by bit to know where they were heading to. I tried to capture the figure of the person, but it was too dark. All I could see was that the person had four fingers instead of five, and I turned back because I was too far from the school, and it was close to hostile lockdown. The next morning, I began a check on all the school staff to confirm which one amongst them have four fingers. After my checking, I found that all of them had normal fingers, no deformation. My fear increased because I knew I was left alone and soon I'll be the next hunt. After launch that day, we were making noise and it attracted the attention of the school principal. The principal entered into our classroom, foaming with anger. All of you kneel down now. Immediately, all the students knelt down, but as for Jude, who was busy discussing with his sitmate Jessica, he called them out to be flogged. He was done flogging Jude, and he chested all the pain, but as for Jessica, when he gave her the first lash, she screamed and held his hand, making his artificial thumb fall off. Jesus! I exclaimed. Everyone in the class turned and looked at me in awe. I immediately apologized so as to avoid attracting any punishment. Now I know the principal is my primary suspect. That evening, according to the booklet, the new teacher gave me states, the monster will take one person tonight. I immediately packed up my stuffs, ready to trace the monster's deeds. That evening by 9.50 p.m., I took my usual spots where I will be able to visualize the whole environment and also see the monster incoming. By 10 p.m., I sighted the monster climbing into the school so, I quickly rushed to the hostel where the student it was coming for occupied. I told him of everything and asked him to come with me if he wanted to be saved, and he did. But before I could step out of the hostel with him, we were both caught by the principal, and he asked the student to go back to his hostel, while the principal cautioned me for my actions. The next morning, the boy was announced dead on the same spot. The principal called the police and got me arrested for of the students. It was so sad that the principal made a video of me when I was taking the student out of his hostel. When I was taken to the police station, the DPO asked them to bring me to him. When he saw me, he became amused and confused as to how will a small, innocent boy like me be a murderer. He did an interview on me, and I told him everything going on in the school. To my greatest surprise, the DPO had an idea of the monster. Immediately he ordered I should be set free, but the accusation placed on me was too big to sweep under the carpet. I was still held, but they had to keep me by the counter and not the cell. The next day, the DPO let me go to school, but on the condition I will be returning back to the police station. After class by 5 o'clock in the evening, I went to do some examination on the exact spot the monster came through the previous night. When I got there, I saw a fellow student walking towards the direction. He was a bit distant away from me, but still I was hiding from his sight as I followed behind, because I never wanted to be caught in that environment. When he got close to the fence, I thought he would deviate to another direction. But no, he jumped over the fence. Immediately I rushed and followed him. While I climbed up on the fence, I saw him with the principal walking through the bush part leading to the forest. I was about jumping down when the security man caught me and dragged me back to the police station. The security man reported to the officer on counter of how he caught me, and the report got to the hearing of the DPO. I was called by the DPO later that evening. The DPO asked me of what attracted me to the scene which I was caught. Without hesitation, I explained everything to the DPO. He was marveled at how large the investigation was. He knew that the officers in charge of that investigation wouldn't be able to get the real results since they were blinded by the principal. So he instructed me to do a background check on the boy, which I found with the principal going to the beast den earlier. The next day during lunch in school, 
Luckily, our class prefect lost her lunch to some strong heads, and she had to starve till evening. I played a gentle man and offered her my lunch. While she was enjoying the meal, I stylishly investigated her and got all I needed about the suspected boy. According to Shalom, my class prefect informed me that the said boy is the only son of our principal, and he is a weird kid because some days he will come to class hairy, while other days he will be smooth-skinned. When I returned back to the station, I stated my reports to the DPO, and he was very proud of me. I also suggested we arrested the boy and keep him in custody so as to confirm and also prevent him from harming the next person on the list. Without delay, some officers were sent to arrest the boy and the principal. While I was about sleeping by 9 o'clock, I began hearing groaning sound from the last cell. Anticipation got the best part of me, so I hurriedly went to see what was groaning. It happened to be that the principal's son was the monster, and he was transforming into a beast. I raised alarm to the hearing of other police officers, and they made sure he didn't escape. The next day, the principal was questioned as to why his son was turning into a beast. He explained that it was a wrong mixture of chemicals which was supposed to give him strength. Furthermore, he said that the cure was to mix different kind of blood and inject it into him. And that was the reason why he was killing his students. And the students were students who had little weird genetics in their blood. The case was furthered to the federal government, and his son was sent abroad to a lab which specify on genetics to correct his genes. On the other hand, the principal was sent to school of genetics to enhance his knowledge. But still the government didn't take their eyes of him. I was rewarded wholesomely and the DPO was promoted. It was a win-win for all.